Throughout history, there have been many kings and queens who were executed, or who were forced off the throne in bloody uprisings and rebellions. For the Tudor king, Henry VIII, he was so fearful of assassination and death that he employed taste testers of food to prevent poisoning, and he would also fortify the entrance to his bedroom each evening. But the Tudor monarch would still face uprising in his country, and it was something most monarchs of the time had to deal with. The most serious uprising on English soil was the Peasants' Revolt in the medieval period, but then the country would be plagued into numerous civil wars, such as the Wars of the Roses. But England's King Charles I following the English Civil War was also sentenced to death, and was executed on a cold January morning in Whitehall, after Parliament ruled to kill the King. But this was during the 17th century. However, in Nepal in 2001, there was a series of executions and killings which rocked the country, as nine members of the royal family were killed in a mass shooting after the royals gathered at the Naranihiti Palace in Kathmandu. The series of killings sent shockwaves around Asia, especially due to the fact the perpetrator was the crown prince and heir himself. Join us today as we look at the horrific executions of the Nepalese royal family. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. The King of Nepal was Burendra, a man who had ruled since the 31st of January 1972. His father had been the previous monarch, and his reign was one which saw him act as an absolute monarch. He inherited a land where political parties were banned, and he ruled through local councils known as panchayats. He tried to maintain this, but in 1990 a number of riots broke out in Nepal. He lifted the ban on political parties, and then agreed to be a constitutional monarch in April 1990. This increased his popularity, but he could not prevent civil war, which lasted between the Maoist rebels and government forces from 1996 until 2006. He kept Nepal's independence despite encroaching rhetoric from India, China and the Soviet Union, and he would visit world leaders around the world. He established diplomatic relations with dozens of countries, and he wanted Nepal, which was sandwiched between two huge Asian powers, to be on good terms with both of them. He wanted his land to be a zone of peace and this was supported. He had history in disarming rebellions and appeasing rebels effectively and he was a great lover of nature. He was keen on conservation and protecting endangered animals that were native to Nepal. Because of this he established national parks and set up areas which were protected from hunters. His government also built large amounts of airports to connect the country better as it was considered that air travel was cheaper than making roads through the hilly and rural areas and terrain. Birendra was criticised for a number of failings, but he was married to Queen Aishwarya. The couple married in 1970, and when Birendra became king, Aishwarya became his consort. The couple had a son, named Dipendra, who was born on the 27th of June 1971, and he was a crown prince of Nepal. He was sent to the UK to study at Eton, and he was interested in sport, and as the Crown Prince, he received military training, also from the Academy of Royal Nepalese Gurkha Army. He was a patron of the National Sports Council, and of the Nepalese Scouts. He would have become the King one day, and he would do this very briefly, however he would take the Crown through a bloody and sinister act of murder, which killed his father, mother, and many other of the Royal Family. But on the 1st of June 2001, authorities were called to Nanaranyahiti Palace, the home of the royal family. What they found was completely shocking. It was reported that, on 1st of June 2001, Crown Prince Dipendra opened fire at a house on the grounds of the Nanaranyahiti Palace, the residence of the Nepalese monarchy, where a party was being held. He shot and killed his father, King Berendra, his mother, the Queen and seven other members of the royal family, including his younger brother and sister, before shooting himself in the head. Due to wiping out most of the line of succession, Dipendra became king, whilst in a comatose state from a head wound. So whilst the party was being held, Dipendra opened fire to house on the grounds of the royal palace. He shot and killed his father the king and mother the queen, but then he also slaughtered his younger brother and sister, and other members of the royal family. After this he shot himself in the head, what was bizarre is that he had killed most of the line of succession, and also the monarch his father, that whilst he was in a coma due to the head wound, he was acting as a king for a number of days without knowing. Other victims besides the king and queen 
were Prince Nananjan, the perpetrator's brother, Princess Shruti, the perpetrator's sister, Dhirendra, the king's brother, Princess Shanti, the king's sister, Sharandra, the king's sister, and her husband, Kama Kadga, and Princess Jayanti, Birendra's first cousin. There are other members of the royal family that were injured also, and different theories and ideas have emerged about why he shot his father, mother, and large parts of the monarchy. One belief by the next in line to the throne was that Dipendra accidentally discharged an automatic weapon inside of the royal palace, and it was said that due to his status as the crown prince and then the brief king, he could never have been charged with murder. Investigations found Dipendra responsible for the killings, and this was not disputed. Scotland Yard and the British police even offered their help in the investigation, but this was turned down. There were other ideas, including whether they were executed by other secret services from other lands. It was said that the bodies of some of the royal family members were found in different parts of the palace, and not where Dipendra began to open fire at people. This would rule out the fact that he did this accidentally. His motive for the murders isn't known and isn't the most clear, but there are other ideas also regarding this. One is that he wanted to marry a woman who he met in the UK, but due to the fact her mother's family were lower class royals in India, the Nepalese royal family and his mother and father rejected this. His bride was then chosen by the royal family, and he was allegedly not happy with this. Some pointed the finger at influences from India, and whether Dipendra had been asked to do this by other nations, and today the killings are still shrouded in controversy and questions. Questions also are always asked about the lack of security around the event and the party, and also why the prince, Gyanendra, missed it, Dipendra's uncle, who then succeeded him. But Dipendra later died from his wounds three days later, and as mentioned his uncle did succeed him, as he had killed the majority of the line of succession. It's also believed that he was drunk at the time of the massacre, and that he shot members of the family who were shielding others. His brother was shielding his mother when he shot them both. What is also compelling is the different weapons that Dipendra used, including a Colt rifle, a 9mm submachine gun, a sparse 12 shotgun, and a Glock 9mm pistol. This points to the fact he may have had some element of premeditation before he carried out the shootings and built up an arsenal for this. But despite occurring within the last few decades, the Nepalese royal massacre was a shocking account of regicide, which could have been viewed as a strong power play but the perpetrator of the crown prince would turn the weapon on himself. It is a strange event in which much today is still not known, and the full details of what happened that day inside the royal palace remain shrouded in secrecy, despite it occurring over 20 years ago. Ultimately, the Nepalese royal massacre resulted in the killing of the king and queen, and members of the royal family, and with this the news of the perpetrator who was a crown prince and heir shocked the world. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, Please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.